Hey guys and welcome back to The Learning Droid. So guys, uh, in this video we're going to have a look at what's called the Detail Shader. It's called the Detail Shader because we make a detail point first, then turn it into a shader. What you're going to need guys, same plies we used for making the detail point. You're going to need a strike surface, in this case I've got a little anvil-like object. It's not actually a real anvil, but it's an anvil-like object. You can use a strike plate, you can use a copper coin. You're going to need a hammer. You're also going to need to have your pyrography machine at the ready. So guys, a detail shader is a very simple, easy to make shading point. You can shade with any point, you can shade with normal detail points, but the detail shader just makes it a bit easier. And as you can imagine, because it starts with a detail point, we're going to start exactly the same way we did when we made our detail point. From onto our detail point. Fold it down. Grip. As I said, I'm just doing this quickly, guys, but if you need more details, you can go and have a look at the... Uh, detail shader point video. Or sorry, the detail point video. Which is the first in the series. I'll annotate it on the screen as well. So there's our detail point. Then we do our tines. One, tine, two. Bend them out. And give this a little extra pinch just to make sure it's nice and tight. There we go, guys. Now we move on to the slightly more difficult bit, which is the actual shaping of the detail shading bit. So first thing you do, guys, plug all your machine in. Get everything ready. Um, I'll speed up this bit. Okay guys, so that bit should have been sped up. So now you can see guys, I have my detail point fixed into my machine. Now as I said guys, or I'm not sure if I actually said it in this version, I've re-filmed this video a couple of times, you should use a slightly thicker wire when you're making a shading point. Don't go for the thinnest. I mean, you can do this out of the thinnest wire, but it's not going to come out very well. Next thing we do, guys, turn on your machine, whack it up to full. And there we go, guys. We've got a nice red hot tip. Next section, guys, is pounding out our shader section. And this is actually quite difficult, guys. What you want to do, guys, is you want small, reasonably firm strikes and you're looking to thin out the end. You're basically looking to hammer out the end thin. A lot of people are very nervous about doing this, guys. It's not that hard to do. However, it is very noisy, so what I'll do is I'll speed this section up slightly, and I'll take the sound out of it for you. But it's just nice, even, firm strikes. You're not looking to smash it flat with one strike. You're looking to work on it slowly. So I've turned off the machine guys and I'll just even out my tines and you even out the tines guys by pinching just below where you've hammered and just pulling. It's all you need to do to even out your tines guys. Now as you can see this is much bigger much flatter and I hope you can see there guys that is a heck of a lot thinner than it was. And this is the start of our shader point. Now my little anvil-like object moved around slightly, that's because I haven't screwed it to the tabletop because I wanted to show you on a white surface. So guys, what do we do next to help shade our point, to help shape our point? Well that's actually quite simple. We take a block of soft wood, like pine, or anything like that, machine's not turned on, we place it and we use a rounded thing. Now you can use a rounded nail punch, or hole punch, um, you can use the rounded back of a hammer, you can use the rounded edge of a coin. I mean, you can even use your pliers to do this, the rounded edge of pliers, and you can press down. I've got a ball peen hammer here, guys, so I've got a rounded back to my hammer. I'm just going to give it a few hammer blows, guys. And the reason I do that is if you see on the piece of wood, there's a little indent in the piece of wood now, a little rounded indent. That roundedness is mimicked 
on this point. So now, get rid of a bit of that excess wood. Um, this round, this point is now slightly rounded, guys, which means that it's now much more suitable for shading. And there's one more thing I want to do to make it suitable uh, or much more ideal for shading, guys. You can see that it's got a slight bend down already. I'm just going to accentuate that slightly, like so. And now, guys, this is really ideal for shading. I can actually show you that. On a bit of spare scrap wood. So, there we go. It heats up nice and slowly. And now, guys, because I have a nice, soft, round surface, I have a nice, easy time producing a shade. So there you go guys, that is a detail shading point, also known as a flat shading point or a hammered shading point. Nice and easy to make guys, it is the easiest shading point to make. It also gives you a really, really fine knife edge guys, so if you want to do really fine lines, this is an easy version of something like a spear point. Spear point's a little bit more fine, but this is a great point, guys, for shading, or if you use the edge of it, for just making very small feather lines. So there you go, guys. That is a hammered flat detail point. Nice and easy, guys. Make a detail point, hammer it flat on a strike surface. Give it a little curve if you want to. You don't have to give it the curve at the end, but that's our finished product. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you again next time.